Hi everyone, I'm just making this quick video uh, to show you or share with you some of my workflow using Fresco. I, in order to record this video, I'm using my iPhone and the iDoc Cam app on my iPhone with a, an, an arm, and maybe I'll take a video of that uh, at the end um, and show you exactly what my setup is like. And, a, um, and the visualizer app on my computer. So trying that combination today. And they're both uh, made by IPVO. Okay, so I have Fresco open here. And uh, I'm going to just start, let's say, with a custom size, creating the document. And here they have lots of already um, pre-created sizes if you want to. I just want to make sure those of you who are used to using vectors and you might want to be now taking advantage of the other non-vector brushes, so the pixel brushes or the watercolor brush in Fresco. So I just remind you then uh, to look at the PPI for the print size and make that at least 300 and you can save this size. You can rename your document. You can also rename your document later. So I'm just gonna call this testing fresco. Oop. And okay, so now the name of my document has changed. And um, I'm gonna save this size. So I'll call this, I'll give it a name. So test size. I have my finished keyboard on, so 300 ppi. Hmm. There we go. All right, and uh, create the document. So as you see, the name of my document is Testing Fresco, and if I wanted to, I could change that again by going to the little wheelhouse or the flower, whatever you call it, up in the right corner. And I could rename it if I wanted. And also I could change many things about the drawing here. Okay, so some really basic uh, things. You might have it the default differently. So I like to put my brushes on the right side simply because I am so right-handed that I don't like to do many things with the left side. I see now there's pixelation happening. So uh, I just like to either use the left hand to create a new layer by pressing the plus sign. That's how to create a new layer. Or when there's a blue uh, frame around the, um, around the active layer, that's how you know that layer is active, then um, I can hide that layer if I want to just by pressing that I. And I don't want to do a lot of things with this hand because I'm not very fast with this hand. Uh, let's, let's explore this side. And again, it might be the reverse for you. If you do want to change the sides, you go back to your cog here and to your app settings and uh, to general. And then you have interface. So yours might look like that when you open it up because I've been futzing around with things. And uh, you would go to press interface and then you can either choose to put the toolbar on the left or the right. Yeah, you can also change the uh, color scheme. Let's see, will it show up any better if it's on dark? Maybe. Let me see how that is in the video. And if I put it on light, it's not such a big difference. I'll leave it on light. Okay, so um, I'll try not to move too quickly so this doesn't pixelate. All right, so uh, being a draw, Adobe Draw user, I'm used to using vector brushes. And so when we go to the third brush from the top and click that, so when something is blue, it means it's active and you click it again and then you get your menu. There is a little gray line over here, and when you 
hold that down, then you can move your brushes anywhere you like. So if I wanted to move it there for a while or so on. The thing is, the bad thing about this is that it does take a lot, a lot of real estate. So I wish this would shrink to something really small when we moved it around. But again, just when you bring it back to the menu and this blue line appears on the side, then it's locked back in. Uh, the main brushes I use, uh, or, or the main brush I use, is this basic round and the basic taper. And I don't really use any of these at all. And, uh, and this basic velocity taper could also be something that I might play with. So I haven't really played with these tapers here very much. And um, so here you have my favorite brushes, and you can name something a favorite brush. And this is the basic round or the basic taper. Okay, um, well, let's see, what else is there here? This is the eraser, right? And uh, you can also have, if you're using uh, pixel brushes, you have lots of different kind of pixel erasers as well, which is really nice if you want to use that as an effect. This is your shapes tool. So when you press that down just once, uh, and you press it again, you get all of your different, so you could have a circle or a square or a polygon or again, all the different ones are here behind the plus sign. Okay, for these basic shapes. Um, and here are a lot of the stamps that I've made. And you can see the stamps that I've made using uh, Capture and they're there and if I want to fill it with something I mean if I want to fill the outside of a stamp that I've made I just press the fill and it gives me this choice of vector or pixel and I'm going to choose vector and in order for it to go away again you have to just choose another tool. Uh, if you wanted to uh, use a basic shape so I'll show you that so you go to your basic shapes and I want it to do a circle the thing here is that when you press that it fills completely Oop, sorry sorry I'm trying it's hard to remember uh, the function is different in draw so uh, my muscle memory starts to play tricks on me all right, uh, so you see here, uh, you can see that I've drawn both of these on the same layer. And uh, and let's say I, um, so that's what's happened here. So we have nothing on that layer, it's blue. I wanna know what layer I'm drawing on. It's the one surrounded with a blue line making it active. All right, um, what's something that I can do then if I want it to erase, yeah? I'm going to be erasing this, just erase a kind of part of it even if I wanted to. Yeah, it's just like a normal eraser. Another thing to note is there is this uh, dot here. So now you know that the brush that I have chosen is the basic round. And if I hold down this, this uh, eraser will function as I'm erasing with a brush. You see that what comes up there? A message comes up on the right top. It says you're erasing with a brush. So suddenly my eraser, my brush has turned into an eraser uh, or the eraser has turned into my vector brush line. Okay, so that's what can happen. So if I'm using my brush, I'm drawing with it in black here, making some lines and I hold this down, I can erase with that same brush. Okay, so this eraser becomes a vector head. Something to think about. Uh, there are also many other uses uh, for this dot, and uh, as you progress with uh, with Fresco, you'll um, you'll maybe need some of them. But I'm just going to show you the basics to get you started to thinking about it. Uh, this is uh, when you want to move things around. So right now I have these both things on the same layer, so that's going they're going to move around together. Uh, what if I want to take now, what we didn't have in draw is a lasso tool. So I have that lasso tool and you can have different kinds of, of, uh, 
uh, like a lasso is a square, a circle, and so on. So I'm going to use this lasso tool, right? And then I'm going to move. So now I'm, even though I had them all the same layer, I'm able to move that. And then deselect is down here, right? So that's a basic lasso a tool to move something. So we want to fill something here. So here's the colors and uh, I'll go back to my vector. And uh, the color wheel is here. So by pressing this color, I can have the color wheel. And the same thing, there's that little gray line. I can move this around anywhere I like on my screen. And, uh, and then uh, get a color. So if I would like to, for example, change my color. Oops, sorry, I keep forgetting that's the X. So I have this out and uh, I'm now chosen my color. I can also have uh, define my color using the sliders, using the RGB amounts. I can fill them in if I want to or use the sliders. Or I can use uh, my different color palettes that I have saved and or created in Capture or so on, or the ready-made palettes that exist already in um, with Adobe. I could also import palettes uh, that I've created um, in uh, Photoshop or elsewhere. Okay, so I have this pink color now, and like I said, I could either draw with it. I can enlarge the thickness here. I can also, uh, what we didn't have in draw is to define the smoothing. So I don't need it to be very smooth right now, depending where I was sitting in a rickety spot, that's enough for me. And you can also uh, do tons of other things if you want to, to. I always take the pressure dynamics and the velocity dynamics off, but you might wanna have those on. I don't need that. And um, let's say I wanna fill this heart. Right, so here's the fill tool, it's a bucket tool. And then you just touch it, it's really quick. Make sure that your image is closed in order, or the drawing is closed in order to fill it. So now what everything that I've done so far is vector. Yeah, so uh, all of this is being drawn vectored, so it will not pixelate no matter how large, it, how large I make it. Um, you also have then uh, some lovely brushes. So this one over here, oops, I have the bucket tool on. So that's undo and redo are over there. You can also double tap to undo. And, uh, and so uh, the brush that I have next here, so this was the vector brush. And, and now we're going to have the watercolor brush which is over there. And uh, so let's make, let's go here and hide this layer because we don't need it more. We could also throw it out, but I have no need to do that right now and choose another layer. And let's work with the watercolor brush. So here I could um, um, choose another color if I liked. Just to remind you a little bit, I think I didn't say this before about the color wheel is, uh, here you can choose um, again, the tone of the color and here's the color itself that we're choosing. And uh, um, you always have white and black there as your kind of quick choices and transparent so that the color goes to zero. Yeah, the transparency goes to zero. White, black, and then the color that you're choosing. Okay, so let's try, try a little orangey color here to be different from the other layers. And now I'm going to be using the watercolor, soft watercolor brush. And, and you can see how it spreads. Now if I press that down, the circle down, it just becomes water. It's just pure water. So when I add pure water, you can imagine it becomes just lighter. So I'm not adding any pigment, I'm just adding water, which could be fun. Yeah, you could see where I'm just adding water and having it blend. So you could have these kind of splotches for information or so on. And let's say we add uh, another color to that. So um, 
let's add like a yellowy color so you can see where it blends really really nicely and it stays what they call it a live watercolor brush is because it stays alive and I'm going to add some water yeah, and you can play with this and think that how you could use it or you could have some fun with it remember this is not a vector now this is not a vector brush so um, so that's why it was important to bump up your PPI to at least 300 when you begin uh, here are an abundance of pixel brushes yeah and you can uh, bring things in from your library again if you're a Photoshop user or so on you can bring a bunch of brushes in here uh, I'm just going to go to the basic hard round brush uh, for the moment and go to black and uh, yeah so um, just I'll just say hello now if you're on a newer iPad you know that you have the Apple Pencil has this this sort of flat area here um, the rest of the area is round and you can then uh, always choose what if double tap on that flat area is in a lot of apps. Now I have chosen that it goes to eraser. So if you look there, I'm double tapping and it's the last pen I was using or brush I was using and then I double tap and it goes to eraser. So let's say I thought that was, I want it to write something else. I double tap and so I don't have to spend a lot of time uh, getting my tools. Something to think about what you want that double tap to be. Okay, um, another thing I want to show you. So, so far we have our different brushes, pixel brush, watercolor brush, vector brush, eraser, shape tool, when you want to move something, right? Again, I have these on the same layer, so I'm moving them. We have our lasso tool, fill tool, and then you have your eyedropper. And eyedropper tool is you can choose, so if you have that, you can choose a color, right? And then when you go back, oops, I'm gonna make that a little bit larger. Sorry, I'm drawing, why, that, why that's coming up is I'm drawing on that layer that is now invisible or hidden. So open a new layer for that. So that's quite large. Yeah, I see that that's quite large by accident. So yeah, I can make that smaller. And, uh, and now I'm drawing with that orange that I took from there. Uh, another fun thing that you can do with the eyedropper in uh, Fresco is when you choose it, you see here that you now have two icons. You have a blue one and a kind of one that looks like a pizza. Yeah. And uh, so I want you to choose, if you choose that one, it's just going, when you choose the uh, color, it's just going to choose one color. Now, if you choose the bottom one, you can choose several colors. So if you look over there, it's saying multiple colors and you can see or just about see let me see if I can can um, zoom in I think I can so let me just zoom in over here right there right so when I am somewhere else choosing different colors, you see how it'll change now I'm going to be somewhere that's more yellow, a little bit orange yellow. You could just just make it out on that video. Yeah, as opposed to here, it's going to be perfectly orange and somewhere here it's going to be taking a cup few of the colors. So now if I go to my round brush that I had before and let me zoom out again. Okay. And um, there we are. If I go to my round brush uh, and I have my color, you'll see that I'm going to make that very large so you can see it really well. That I'm going to make another layer. Let me just put these letters away and whoop, choose that layer. So uh, now when I'm using my brush, you see how it has different colors it's because I chose two colors at the same time 
And so uh, let's play with that for a moment. So let me put that away as well and start a new layer. Um, let's say with this brush, I made some kind of a swatch. Oops, let me do this. So a swatch like that. Okay, uh, this way. No, that's too much. A swatch like that, let's say. And now I take my uh, eyedropper tool and I go here and I choose my pizza and I make this much smaller, right? So it is inside my eyedropper. So all I did was take two fingers and pinch the canvas, okay? And now when the eyedropper tool is choosing something, it's choosing something striped. So now I go back and you can see what I've chosen because that is where my color was before, right? So I could show something as black, white, one of the colors, but now I'm choosing something with the eyedropper. And when I go in, it's a striped brush. So the color is striped. And it's kind of cool because the end of it, if you can see, is <laughs> striped as well. Okay, you might find a cool kind of use for that. It makes it look a little bit 3D as well. Suddenly the brush is like a, a 3D cord or a, a licorice stick or a candy or whatever. So that's kind of nice and you can play with that a lot. One thing that you can do as well is, so I'm gonna go here and just make sure my brush is small enough and I'm going to make make a new layer. Let me hide this layer. And I'm going to draw a heart. All right, so I've drawn a heart. And now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to my eyedropper. I'm going to choose my pizza. And I'm going to put this heart inside. Oops, sorry. We well, need to practice this as well to get good at it, there you go. So if you see here in my multiple colors, I don't know if you can, but anyways, that's where it shows what is in the eyedropper. It also shows here where the color is, you're gonna see a little heart. So now when I go back to my round brush, let me make sure it's big enough, you'll see, you see, look, the end of the round brush is a heart. So when I touch down my round brush, Oh, sorry, it's pressing on a hidden layer. I don't know why it keeps choosing that. Let me choose that. So, okay, so there, if I touch, just touch the end of it, it's going to be a heart. If I move it along, it's gonna be kind of in the shape of a heart. And remember, I have those, uh, that two coloredness <laughs> underneath it. That's why it's kind of blackish orange. Now, if I go to the brush itself, and I change the spacing of it. You see that it's changing the spacing. So now when I touch down, I can make several hearts if I want to, or if I do the spacing even more, I can create, you know, sparser spacing. If I make the heart smaller and I touch on the spacing, I can make a chain. So let me again hide that. Let me hide that. Oops, let me hide that. Sorry about that. And let me just open up a new layer and draw. So now I can make a chain of these hearts if I want to. Or whatever you want. So you make essentially a very quick stamp brush from it, which is pretty cool. Okay, let's hide that layer. And you can see I have an unlimited amount of layers. Good thing, bad thing, if you can manage them. And here we have um, a photograph. So I can take a picture with my camera and I'll do that just to show you the my setup here. So that's the arm I'm using and that's my mobile phone. So I will show that to you. There you go, and now you see it. So use photo, all right? And uh, and I don't need it to be the entire size of the screen, so I'll make that smaller, but I'll show you. So 
make another layer on top and uh, here this is my setup so um, now you could see my brush is my heart brush and I don't want that to be uh, anymore so I will just choose another color mm, it could be good to stand out so there's no green in my image so I'll use green and if you see here this is my oop the spacing <laughs> I left the spacing down so I will again bump down my spacing if I want to make dots with any with my hard round brush I can make my spacing large or then put my spacing to zero and it behaves like a normal brush again so you can see that I have this kind of arm here for my setup and that is and over here is my mobile phone right and that's what's filming my iPad that was over there but I used it to take a photograph and that's my laptop over there the IPVO uh, visualizer app on it and that's a spare screen not being in work and those are some always some some inspiring drawings that I are are not drawings uh, photographs that I have there yeah, and some notes from uh, my past teaching and always things to do and bits and bobs all around. Some, some things to remember. So my desk is tidy enough, doesn't need to be any more tidy than that. So just wanted to remind you that, so that's where you would either take a photograph with your camera or insert a photo uh, from your photo library or from a file or from the Creative Cloud. So I think right now, I think we've gone through most of everything on this left side. Just remind you then, uh, I'll take that and, and again, and make it invisible. You're adding layers. And then when you touch upon a layer, so let's go to, for example, that layer there where we had drawn those hearts. And again, it's active because it's blue. And if I touch it again, I get a whole layer actions. So. You can add layers from here, hide layers, clear layers, delete, duplicate a layer, and so on, and use masks. I'm not going to explain masks this time. It's going to take quite it's, its own video itself, but something to think about. And, um, and as well as, so you can get there by touching the layer itself or by touching the dot, dot, dot. Okay, so I'll often, you know, use these with my right hand and draw and use my left hand to either add a layer or to uh, look at the layer actions that I want or to hide a layer and again or the layer actions from here. You also have a ruler if you want to use it. It's here on the bottom that you press and that you can you can use if you like. So Oops, I'm on a invisible layer. So if you want something to make straight lines with, feel free to use a ruler if that's something that would you find helpful. Again, you deactivate and activate it by pressing the bottom there. And uh, um, what else? Here, so okay, so I think we've gone through all of these and here you have the layers so you can hide the, all of the layers here and you can hide all of your tools here. So essentially, you could have, um, all you have visible is that and that tiny little thing. So if you were drawing with one tool mainly. Uh, so you could, for example, be drawing, uh, let me choose black, for example, and let me hide this layer. And that layer as well and let me just start a new layer and so for example um, I could be drawing with black right so I hide all my layers all right double tapping to get my eraser all right and uh, if I had made some, um, hmm. no, that's not good. So I'm double tapping to undo. So let's say I have, I make some kind of quick shapes like that while I'm listening and I press that down. Essentially, I get the same 
uh, brush I was using as an eraser so I could make some really quick you know points here something like that I don't know and then have something going on under here or putting some notes down yeah, thinking of, of quick ways to use, sorry about that fast movement, to use the, the tools in a very minimalist way. So pressing down on that eraser always get makes this pen or whatever brush you have an eraser. Yeah, double tapping here goes to an eraser itself, the eraser tool itself. Okay, and uh, so there we have Press, pressing that, we get our layers to come back and hide. And then we have another toggle here. And we hear, we see the layer property. So we see that this is a vector layer. We have different blend modes. And here you can change the opacity, opacity of the layer. Yeah. So if you notice, there's different symbols. So this kind of symbol is a vector layer. Whereas if we look there, this is a pixel layer. So it has this little pixelized symbol. same as here. So if we look at that properties, that's a pixel layer as well, the one we did watercolor on. Okay, so I think that that's really the basics and undo and redo are here. Two fingers down is, is undo. And, uh, and then when you're ready, you can do a quick export. So you share a snapshot, right, of your uh, of your drawing and then you can just save the image right over there or you can save it to files you can print it you can airdrop it you can send it a message you can put it wherever you like and that's going to be a JPEG for me for my default or you can publish an export so you could do a quick export like I said before or you can export as and then you can decide what you're going to export it as again you can post it to to Behance or Behance, I don't know, I've never known how Beyonce, I don't know what it does, or you can export it as a time lapse. All right, so that's a kind of uh, tour of Fresco. And uh, where you find your documents, you can find the ones you've been drawing now, but the cloud documents are there. Yeah, and you can do lots and lots of interesting things. And if you were in draw, you can import uh, Photoshop files. I mean, if you're in um, uh, Adobe, you have Adobe uh, ID and you're using Photoshop, for example, you could uh, import a Photoshop file or you can import files from draw or sketch as well. Alrighty, and you can create a new folder over here Right, you can create a new folder and then you have to drag things into that folder. Different ways to see things. And again, uh, your work is being synced because it's online. And here again, you get to your app settings from here as well. Okay, and if you wanna learn some more, there are some tutorials in the learn section. And if you want to discover some wonderful things, there's also some artist videos and lots of work uh, to be inspired by. And that's it for me. Hope this is helpful.